हेलो इन द सीरीज ऑफ डी एस पी टी एम एस थ्री टू जीरो एफ टू एट थ्री थ्री फाइव आई एम गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस यू सम बेसिक टर्मोलॉजी रिलेटेड टू माइक्रो प्रोसेसर माइक्रो कंट्रोलर डिजिटल सिग्नल प्रोसेसर डिजिटल सिग्नल कंट्रोलर एंड इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस यू विद सम ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस सीरीज विल बी वॉट इज द माइक्रो प्रोसेसर माइक्रो कंट्रोलर वॉट इज द डिजिटल सिग्नल प्रोसेसर वाई इट इज़ यूजफुल what are the major area of applications of the dsp what is its architecture dsp architecture we basically we are talking about the dsp architecture because this lecture series on dsp and uh, some modules uh, for the real time applications for example if you want to use a pwm if you want to use a e cap enhanced capture area modules if you want to use a general purpose input output if you want to use adc so uh, these are the modules we will talk uh, about these modules in later session so first we have to discuss some keywords uh, that is often uh, useful to speak in the digital controls or computing the tms 30 f2 x335 belongs to a group of device that is called a digital signal controller we use some words like microprocessor microcontroller microcomputer to specify a given sort of device when it comes to a digital signal processing it names is a digital signal processor now we will begin with some terms like microprocessor microcomputer microcontroller digital signal processor and digital signal controller so first thing we will talk about what is the microprocessor and what is the microcontroller so the microprocessor is a central device for all computer system it consists of two architecture it consists of two architecture what are the architecture like von neumann architecture and harvard architecture one is von neumann architecture the second one is harvard architecture what is the difference between the von neumann architecture and harvard architecture the von neumann architecture shared memory space between core and data as there is its shared memory buses between core and data whereas in the hardware architecture there will be two independent memory space for the core and data as well as for two memory bus system for the core and data now how the microprocessor will work how the core instructions will be work for microprocessor so microprocessor consists of the two part one is the control unit one is the central processing unit it operates on a input data input signals it will read the data from the core memory data memory the core memory read operates from the data memory write results back to the data memory or it process the all the operation in the control unit and central processor unit and it update the output module has processing has completed so all computing in based on machine code instruction write on sequential stored in the core memory the microprocessor read this instruction one after each other modules in the control logic now what will do if we add some memory to your microprocessor if you add some peripherals if we add some memory and if we add some peripherals to the microprocessor why we are going to add all these things to the microprocessor suppose if you want to use your microprocessor and you want to set up your computer system so what is your computer your computer is nothing but it consists of the microprocessor it consists of some memory data memory core memory and it consists of some peripherals and what are the peripherals 
why it is being used in the your computer system suppose you want to give your input you want to uh, give your input and you want to take the output from the, your computer so for this you require some peripherals so if we add memory as well as peripherals to your microprocessor it will be a microcomputer in general so what peripherals we can include we can include digital inputs output line analog to digital converter digital to analog converter timer count unit pwm digital capture input lines and as well as you want to connect your internet okay you want to send it the data you want to collect you want to uh, take the data from the com um, from your computer so you need some serial communication interface serial peripheral interface and you want to control your wi-fi so you can use your control area network local interconnect network you want to connect your pen drive all these things so you need the universal serial the usb and graphical output device so it's this it will be your micro computer so micro compute microcontroller is nothing more than a micro computer as a single silicon chip all computing power and input output channels that are required to design a real time control system are on chip it guarantees cost efficient and powerful solution for emirate applications and whatever modern device products you have it is a backbone for all the modern device and all microprocessor architectures are used inside microcontroller so microcontrollers are used in both architectures one human and hardware architecture now we comes to digital signal processor we have talk about the digital signal we have we have talk about the microprocessor microcontroller microcomputer now what is the use of digital signal processor so a digital signal processor is a specific device listen it is a specific device that is designed around a typical mathematical operation to manipulate digital data that are measured by the sensors the objective is to process the data as quickly as possible to be able to generate an output stream of a new data in real time so a digital signal processor it is similar to the microprocessor it is the core of the computer computing system what is this tsp can measure filter and it compress continuous analog signals and you can do it can do the mathematical operation and manipulate the signals and give the corresponding results then the microprocessor also consists the additional hardware in it to speed up of a speed up of mathematical operations so what are the additional hardware units additional hardware units are multiplier units arithmetic units it consists of additional bus system for parallel access and additional hardware shifter for scaling or multiplying or division by Two. Now, we'll talk about what are the applications. Why, in which area it is mostly used? As you can see, it is used in automation. It is used in automation and process control. In the automation and process control, as you can see in the barcode scanner. in the machine vision camera as you can see it is used in a consumer and portable electronics in audio dock mp3 player mobile phones and smart watch nowadays in the mobile phone 
mostly fpgas are used but dsps also have some advantage as compared to fpga now the industrial applications we use a digital multimeter as you have in if you are power electronics um, if you have a power electronics in, in a, any laboratory you have a digital multimeters nowadays you have a high speed data equation systems you have a signal generator signal waveforms that also contains the uh, dsp if you have a uh, electric drives uh, if you want to control the speed of electric drives okay so there also you, you have to use uh, you can use the uh, uh, dsp digital signal processor in the communication and telecoms it is uh, widely used you can see the most of the applications the health and technologies in the city scan and mri scan and endoscope and ultrasound systems as well as in the security and safety purpose uh, it is uh, widely used in the military and avionics imaging in, in the fingerprint biometric also it is widely used now we will talk about the features of dsp tms 320 it is manufactured by texas instrument based on a static CMOS technology and has a DSP core voltage is 1.8 to 1.9 volt with 3.3 volt input output. DSP is a 32 bit floating point. It's all the computing computation is done using the 32 bit 32 bit floating point digital signal processor in the digital signal controller digital signal controller based on hardware bus architecture consists of six channel tma controller 96 interrupt sources 88 general purpose input output except that it has 16 adc channel each 12 bit Diamond units, voice tag modules, clock and system control, on chip memory, EPWM module, interrupt system, static RAM, external interrupts, and DAC that is four parallel DAC that are 8 bit and four are 12 bits now the tms320f 28335 digital signal controller is capable of executing six basic operation in a single instruction cycle and therefore the architecture of the device must reflect these features in the same way remember these key points when we look into the detail of digital signal controller it will help you to understand the philosophy behind the device with its different hardware units doing six basic math operation it's no magic we'll find all the hardware modules that are required to do so so in this architecture it has internal bus structure central processing unit dma direct memory access controller floating point arithmetic unit fixed point hardware multiplier arithmetic unit hardware shifter pipeline processing of instruction as well as memory map and the architecture is divided into the following functional unit internal and external bus mixer internal and external bus system cpu internal memory section control peripherals, communication channels, direct memory access, interrupt management system, PIE, peripheral interest expansion, core time unit, real time emulation interface. We will talk in detail the architecture. We will find out the solution for each and every modules that architecture contains. We will talk about the peripherals in the details, how can we use, how can we access the registers, 
how can we access the peripherals how can we use dynamic memory allocation for real time application 12 bit adc general purpose input output serial peripheral input interface captured area network pulse wave modulation techniques how to implement in the dsp for the real time applications for example if you want to control the speed of electric drives or speed of induction motor how you are going to control the pulse of the converter what are the resistors what are the modules are required for controlling the speed of the induction motor what are the resistors are required to do the programming in the dsp so we will talk each and every module in the detail in the next lectures of this series if you found any difficulties you can write you can comment and you can share my channel so this can help for other people who are going to learn the dsp thank you